Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, September 16th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin with Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy is the person who fears the Lord, taking great delight in his commands. His descendants will be powerful in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, compassionate, and righteous. Good will come to the one who lends generously and conducts his business fairly. He will never be shaken. The righteous one will be remembered forever. He will not fear bad news. His heart is confident, trusting in the Lord. His heart is assured. He will not fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. He distributes freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. The wicked one will see it and be angry. He will gnash his teeth in despair. The desire of the wicked leads to ruin. So far, we have seen the work that King Josiah did to repair and restore the temple that his father, Manasseh, had ruined in so many ways. Today we're going to see Josiah lead the people of Israel in a great celebration of the Passover. Josiah observed the Lord's Passover and slaughtered the Passover lambs on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their responsibilities and encouraged them to serve in the Lord's temple. He said to the Levites who taught all Israel the holy things of the Lord, Put the holy ark in the temple built by Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. Since you do not have to carry it on your shoulders, now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Organize your ancestral families by your divisions according to the written instruction of King David of Israel and that of his son Solomon. Serve in the holy place by the groupings of the ancestral families for your brothers, the lay people and according to the divisions of the Levites by family. Slaughter the Passover lambs, consecrate yourselves, and make preparations for your brothers to carry out the word of the Lord through Moses. Then Josiah donated 30,000 sheep, lambs, and young goats, plus 3,000 cattle from his own possessions, for the Passover sacrifice for all the lay people who were present. We move to verse 16. So all the service of the Lord was established that day for observing the Passover and for observing burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord, according to the command of King Josiah. The Israelites who were present in Judah also observed the Passover at that time and the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. No Passover had been observed like it in Israel since the days of the prophet Samuel. None of the kings of Israel ever observed a Passover like the one that Josiah observed with the priests, the Levites, and all Judah, the Israelites who were present in Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, this Passover was observed. After all this that Josiah had prepared for the temple, King Necho of Egypt marched up to fight at Carchemish by the Euphrates, and Josiah went out to confront him. But Necho sent messengers to him, saying, What is the issue between you and me, king of Judah? I have not come against you today, but I am fighting another dynasty. God told me to hurry. Stop opposing God who is with me. Don't make him destroy you. But Josiah did not turn away from him. Instead, in order to fight with him, he disguised himself. He did not listen to Nico's words from the mouth of God, but went to the valley of Megiddo to fight. The archers shot King Josiah, and he said to his servants, Take me away, for I am severely wounded. So his servants took him out of the war chariot 
carried him in his second chariot and brought him to Jerusalem. Then he died, and they buried him in the tomb of his ancestors. All Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Jeremiah chanted a dirge over Josiah, and all the male and female singers still speak of Josiah in their dirges today. They establish them as a statute for Israel, and indeed they are written in the dirges. Paul has been talking about the sufficiency of Christ. We've seen the sufficiency of our Savior when it comes to the work he did in redeeming us from our sins. Today we're going to see the sufficiency of Jesus as he enables us to live our lives in ways that glorify him. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient, and you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. In Christ, there is not Greek and Jew, Circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free. The Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of Christ, to which you were called in one body, rule your hearts. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, <clears throat> singing to God with gratitudes in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Slaves, obey your human masters in everything. Don't work only while being watched as people pleasers to work wholeheartedly, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do it from the heart, as something done for the Lord and not for people, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done, and there is no favoritism. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.